Christians are being killed by Islamic extremists in many countries of the world. What should our response be? Today's show. Dr. Jason Peters is the Associate Vice President of Connection for the Voice of the Martyrs. Dr. Peters travels extensively to Islamic countries overseeing important Voice of the Martyrs projects, including I Am N, a book and film releasing in 2016. Throughout his career, Dr. Peters has worked with key U.S. organizations like the Pentagon as a chaplain and director of crisis and trauma training, a voice for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Please welcome Dr. Jason Peters. Jason, hey, welcome back. Thanks, man. man. It's great to be here. Good to have you here. Now, we've been talking already, but this book has come out by, by the voice of the martyrs, I am in. And uh, what's going on around the planet is, it's horrifying. Yeah. And you guys are on top of most of this. Tell me a little bit about the voice of the martyrs. Well, our mission is really to provide practical and spiritual assistance to persecuted Christians. So we work in 68 countries around the world. Um, I've had a chance to work in 40, 41 countries. And it's amazing when you get a chance to meet these brothers and sisters face to face. So that's what I've been doing in recent years is literally traveling around, meeting with brothers and sisters and saying, tell me your story. What, what's God doing in your life and how can we help? So we have uh, just hundreds, 1,600 projects last year of very practical help sometimes providing uh, food, shelter, clothing. In yeah. fact, uh, the IMN book is about Christians facing Islamic extremists. And since uh, Mosul was taken, uh, we have provided more than $5 million of aid in uh, two refugees and two people affected by ISIS. And that includes very practical help yeah. and also spiritual help. In fact, here's an interesting fact you might appreciate, Leon. We have distributed 80,000 Bibles to victims of ISIS. Now think about this. Uh, they have burned libraries. The University of Mosul burned the library, burned the books, uh, and they've burned Bibles, tens of thousands of Bibles. So we don't know for sure, of course, but it's possible that the Voice of the Martyrs has literally replaced more Bibles in Iraq and Syria, Lebanon, Turkey, Jordan, than, uh, than ISIS was able to destroy. So praise God for that. Wow, that's awesome. Now, in the book, you and I were just talking, there are some themes mm -hmm. that I think is good for the rest of us to hear. Uh, we tend to either get angry and mad about all this, or we just don't even want to look at it anymore. And, uh, but what are, let's go through some of these themes. Yeah. I think it'll help people. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the whole reason we wrote the book. We said, we're meeting with these brothers and sisters. We're hearing their stories. What is the, what is the inspiration for us in Canada, us in the United States? How should we respond? So some of the themes are pretty normal, uh, what you would expect. For example, sacrifice. Obviously, uh, you know, we know that people have sacrificed greatly in the face of ISIS. They've given up their homes, their businesses, sometimes their families. I, I don't even, honestly, Leon, I don't even want to tell you uh, a story that haunts me to this day of uh, a young girl being taken by ISIS. It's so bad that when you think about sacrifice, there are Christian people I've met with who, who would rather have their daughter, their wife, they, they hope they're dead because they've been kidnapped. And I, I've met with some of these girls. I met with girls who escaped, uh, one in Lebanon, one in, uh, or two in Nigeria, who literally escaped these Muslim extremists. And, and they, uh, the stories, I mean, it's, it's horrible. So can you imagine wishing that your, your daughter uh, were dead so that she wouldn't be a sex slave? I mean, that's really what yep. this boils down to. Yeah. So anyway, incredible sacrifice. Um, perseverance, you know, there's a story of, of people, because this isn't easy. It's not like you think, um, you know, it's just magic that we just sort of overcome our anger and our frustration because this is a long journey. When I met with uh, Christians recently, a couple weeks ago in Iraq, that are living in a tent for a year and a half, it, you have to have some perseverance. You know? And perseverance, wow. as we know from Scripture, it, it builds character. And then uh, it leads us to hope. And that's what's going on right now in some of these stories. Uh, can I tell you a story about a worship leader uh, or a worship experience that really demonstrates perseverance? Yeah. Um, this was an incredible story. It was a lady named Bon Noshaba. She said, you know, I, I was from kind of an average family. I was born in Baghdad. My husband was a taxi driver until ISIS came and, and kidnapped my husband. And she had two children. She's 36 years old. Wow. She began to live as a nomad she, because she was scared for her children's safety. Right. She couldn't get her husband back. The police wouldn't help. And so as she was, she was running around, she got so desperate. And this really speaks to the, the essence of perseverance. Um, she got so desperate, she just was hopeless. And she actually tried to commit suicide. 
Wow. Uh, she cut her wrist. She woke up in the hospital. And, uh, and she said, Jesus, you know, why have you <laughs> forsaken me? You know, why, why have you left me to suffer like this? Um, a friend of hers invited her to church. Said, you know, you've got to come back to church. She came in. She said, it's just an incredible story. She said, the pastor said, uh, lift your hands in the air. Uh, Jesus is here. She raised her hand. She feels the touch of Jesus. She said it changed her entire perspective. Now she's, a, she's an advocate for the biblical response to persecution, which is based on uh, really persevering, persevering through the suffering. Jesus said in John 15, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So we need to persevere in the midst of that. Let me share one more. Uh, yeah. And the, perseverance, sacrifice, courage, we talked about a little bit before. But one of the ones that really strikes many as unusual, you know, some of these you expect, faithfulness, sacrifice, perseverance, courage. Forgiveness is hard for us to get our heads around. But another one that is just remarkable is joy. How can joy be one of the themes of Christians facing Islamic extremists. We've got stories in the book of Christians who are filled with joy when they face this, side, this sort of opposition. The wow. only answer, the only, only answer, answer for that is the Holy Spirit yeah. providing joy. That's, that's the only answer, and it's incredible to see. Wow, you know, when we look at every city has got Muslims that are moving mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, and, and they're in our society, how, how do we here in the Western world, how do we reach out to them? Because the mission field is right here. And actually, I'm not seeing an awful lot of churches that are saying, we've got to equip our churches to reach out because it's a mission field. They're bringing them in from all over That's the world. Right. How could, what are some of the keys to reaching and touching them, do you think? Well, I think that's a great question. And my wife, I appreciate her perspective on this because, you know, we live in the United States and there are Muslims in our area. And what she does, she intentionally, when she sees somebody who's veiled, when she's walking through Walmart or something like that, and she sees somebody, she reaches out to them. And, yeah. and sometimes as, as men, especially with Muslim women, we have to be very careful. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend uh, speaking to a Muslim woman. Wow. Uh, but I would, uh, if you're a female, uh, you have a wide open door. And it was interesting, we've heard a story, it was a fantastic story of a Muslim woman who was at a play group. And she was watching uh, her grandchildren play at this group and she was veiled, of course. Someone began to talk with her. She started to cry. And they, they said, what, what's going on? She said, I've been here for years and nobody, nobody has ever talked to me because they're driven by fear. And we see the, the hijab, we see the garb, and we think, I need to stay away from that. That's well, exactly Jesus' right. love compels us to go into that, to go, yes. to reach out, to love, and to really serve. Even if we might be a little scared inside, we pray for courage, and we pray for grace to reach out. So if you are watching this, and you know you're a believer, and you're a woman, reach out to mm -hmm. them. You know, walk over, say hi, be kind. Yes. If they're living close to your neighborhood, even if they're not, inviting them into your home is something yes. powerful because Huge. it means a lot. In fact, it means a lot to anybody today because mm -hmm. we're always having coffee at coffee mm -hmm. shops. But if you get into somebody's home is, is a big statement. Yeah, especially in these cultures, in Middle Eastern culture. And I, I've spent, you don't even want to know how many hours just sitting in a circle on the floor, sipping tea with people, which, uh, you know, as Westerners, we're kind of like, hey, when are we going to get to the business? When are we going to get to work? But that's a very, very much a part of the culture's relationship. And to invite someone into your home. So you don't go straight to home, business. No, you, you ask about family, you get to know them, and you invite them into your family and your life. And you're right, God works. I, let me just say this. I'm going I'm to make a bold statement. Okay. Uh, Canada and the United States would be radically changed if every Christian said, I'm going to intentionally invite one Muslim into my home. It would change the face of these nations. It really would. Because that hospitality, God works through that. And it's not you're inviting them in so you can bash them with a Bible or evangel. No, just to love them, to show them God's grace. It, 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 it's unbelievable. You know, I had a, in our churches here, we have a, uh, a number of sites, but in one day I had a couple of men walk up to speak with me. And uh, one of them said that he was a Muslim, but he wanted to know if it was okay to attend our church because he loved the positive, mm -hmm. loving message. Yes. And I said, absolutely. He says, actually, there's about 30 of us mm -hmm. that come. Do you have a problem? I wow. said, no, not at all. And he said, this is my imam. Yeah. And uh. <laughs> he pointed the guy beside him. <laughs> wow. And so I said, welcome. And he asked me the same yeah. questions. Is it yeah. okay if they come wow. once in a while? And That's it was really unusual for me. I said, yeah. And then before they left, he said, I heard you talk about healing. Mm. 
He said, would you pray for me? I wow. have never been able to, if something's wrong with his knee, mm -hmm. he always walk with a limp. Yeah. And I said, do you have a problem with me praying mm -hmm. in Jesus' name? Mm -hmm. And he goes, not yeah. at all. Yeah. So I mean, and I don't, I'm not an expert on the Muslim world, mm -hmm. so I just kind of went, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I just took his hand and prayed. And you know, we, we greet each other and they left and we smiled. And about two weeks later, I'm on a plane flying back home and on walks this, it was a businessman, an imam, and he wow. walks in and he sees me on the plane and he actually, the whole plane was waiting for him. Yeah. And you know how he's yeah. got an elite status, mm -hmm. I think, so they were kind of mm -hmm. holding it. And yeah. he comes walking on yeah. and he sees me in front of the whole, and he goes, mm -hmm. Pastor Leon. Wow. He comes over and he gives me this big hug wow. and unashamed, yeah. he says, yeah. you prayed for my leg. Yeah. It is completely wow. healed. Praise God. Yeah. And then he went to his seat. Yeah. And I think sometimes we have these big, uh, walls mm -hmm. built up inside, but they're yeah. people. That's right. That's and they right. respond to love. Yeah, and we're seeing uh, power evangelism kind of activities like that all over the world. Are where we? People are saying, yeah, they're, they're saying, hey, can you come and pray for me? I've prayed to our, our local animistic gods. You know, I, I've prayed to, uh, you know, other uh, Buddhist, God, Hindu, you know, cultures. They're, they're praying to other places and they're saying, uh, can we try to pray to Jesus and see what happens? And he's healing in, wow. in amazing ways. Uh, the dreams, visions. I, I got to tell you the story in Bahrain. There's, there's, there was only one Christian bookstore. I mean, Bahrain's an Islamic country. It's not that conservative, but because it's kind of further away from from Mecca. But, but anyway, it was a country where uh, this person came into the bookstore, and said uh, it was a Muslim, and and it, as it turns out, they had been having dreams. And, and as they were having these dreams, they were writing down. You know, when you wake up from a dream, if it's remarkable, you might want to write it down. And and so he, he was writing down these thoughts, and he, he shows it to the guy. He said, do you know what this means? It turns out it was the, the Gospel of John, literally being spoken to him personally. And obviously, oh, uh, he man. chose to follow Christ. Uh, Jesus is at work in miraculous ways. Uh, and we can talk about that in the Miracle Network, right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely we can. We're going to take a break right here. And if you just tuned in, my guest today is Jason Peters from Voice of the Martyrs. And we're talking about this book of I Am in. I want to encourage you to get a copy. I think it's crucial that every Christian today understand the Muslim world, how to reach out and love them, how to see the power of God invade this world in a great way and see incredible changes. And we're finding out that the greatest revival we've ever seen is taking place right now amongst this world. So let's get involved so we can get over in the Western countries as well. So you don't want to miss this. Next with Jason. We'll be right back. Not forgiving, it's like drinking poison yeah. and expecting it to affect the other person. It, it just doesn't work. You know, you're, you're just eaten up with bitterness and hatred. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Welcome back. My guest today is Jason Peters from Voice of the Martyrs. Now, 
you were just talking off camera that there's like nine hot spots. That's right. Yeah. I don't know that. Tell me yeah. about that. Well, you know, it's easy for us to watch the news. And the news sort of bounces around to whatever's the most interesting at the time, it's right? true. And so you forget that while this is happening in Iraq and Syria right now with ISIS, that there are eight other Islamic extremist groups just wreaking havoc all over the world. You know, places like the Philippines. How often do we think about the Philippines? The Moro Islamic uh, Liberation Front is working there. You look at the... Um, uh, Al-Shabaab. You remember the attack in Garissa in Kenya? You remember this university, uh, they came right, in, right, they right. said, are you a Muslim Christian? We've sort of forgotten about Al-Shabaab yeah. in Somalia and Kenya. What about um, Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda is still very active. Yes, the founder Osama bin Laden ha is gone, but his disciples are still wreaking havoc in places throughout the Middle East. Uh, what about the Taliban in Afghanistan? Still a lot of suffering. We, in fact, uh, the Voice of the Martyrs has just recently met with and is working with um, a widow who, uh, whose husband and two children were killed in Kabul, Afghanistan. And this happens all the time. Uh, so I, I just want us to, to remember that uh, there's a lot of extremism happening around the world. Are they all connected? Like, do they all talk to each other and encourage each other? Are they against each mm -hmm. other? What does that look like? Yeah, it's a great question. Some of them are connected. In fact, Boko Haram in northern Nigeria, and I, I want to tell you a story about Boko Haram in a minute. It's, it's remarkable what God's doing in northern Nigeria. But they, uh, last year in 2015, they declared allegiance to ISIS. So they're in Nigeria. You know, and they look up to uh, Iraq and Syria and ISIS. They say, hey, we want to join with you guys because you're the real caliphate. You know, your, your leader is a descendant of Muhammad, and so we're going to partner with you. So, yes, sometimes they do. Interestingly, ISIS is so extreme in some cases that al-Qaeda has sort of distanced themselves at times and said, whoa, whoa, hey, we're terrorists. <laughs> we're extremists, but we're not that extreme. Um, so it's just interesting. It's always shifting. Depends on the, the people involved, of course, and it, and it ebbs and flows. But let me tell you about uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria. Okay. Islamic extremists, they want to take over northern Nigeria. Uh, I've been there a couple times. I met with a widow, uh, several widows actually, but one who, who told me a story of forgiveness, which I'll never forget. She said, uh, you know, these Muslim extremists, they came, they killed my husband. They're from my area, so I, I know them. In fact, she said, believe it or not, I literally walked down the street one day and I saw the man who killed my husband walking the other direction. And she said it, it, it wasn't easy and it hasn't been a gradual process, but I, I'm really learning to forgive. Because wow. as you know, and we talk about in the book, uh, not forgiving is, is like drinking poison yeah. and expecting it to affect the other person. It, it just doesn't work. You know, you're, you're just eaten up with bitterness and hatred. And so one of the most compelling manifestations of God's grace is forgiveness. And when you, when you actually, because by the way, that guy who killed her husband, he feels horrible. He, he knows it. You know, he knows deep down inside that was wrong. He remembers the blood on his hands. He yep. remembers the way that that Christian died yep. in faith. Uh, and so when he, when he feels that genuine warmth and forgiveness from someone who he's hurt like that, it, it's just amazing. Let me tell you about this pastor named Habila. Habila was in Northern Iraq and, uh, he, he was literally put down on the ground, an AK-47 was shoved in his face, and they said, uh, you know, you need to say the Shahada, if you're a Muslim, prove it. And, and he said, no, I'm a Christian. I'm not, I'm not going to convert. They said, well, they looked to his wife. They, it, this story is told in the book, by the way. It's, it's an amazing story. Um, they looked to his wife, and they said, hey, tell your husband. We don't want to kill him. Tell him to say he's a Muslim so we can move on. And she, she, she didn't tell him that. And so he, he said, I'm a Christian. They shot him in the face. I mean, this guy, if you meet him today, I, I was in his home. His face is just shot off. I mean, literally like half of his face is just gone. And he's, he's scarred, deeply scarred. But Habila has chosen to forgive those who persecute him. It's, it's just amazing. It's only by God's grace. You know, when you talk about forgiveness, uh, a lot of people who have been horribly betrayed, hurt, had had things done to them, They'll often say when you first talk to them, there's no way I can forgive right. them. And I think they're thinking about setting that person free. As a, but it's the biggest, greatest gift you'll ever give yourself. Because yes. like you yes. said, it's like right. drinking poison yeah. if you don't. But that person is destroyed a day, a week, a month of your life. Why would you want them to destroy the rest of your life? That's right. So yeah. forgiveness is a choice. Yeah, and it's, it's obedience. obedience. It's obedience. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's what you were just saying. It's all about obedience because... You know, when, when Jesus was on the cross, Luke 23, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. We have to be mature enough spiritually, and that's what this is about. It's really about maturing in our faith, to say, 
that Muslim extremist, they, they don't know what they're doing. I mean, there's demonic possession going on. There, there's things that are happening that they're just unexplainable. When you look at the brutality of some Islamic extremists, it, it, there's no way you can explain it from a human perspective. Who would do that to a little girl? You know, who would, who would burn someone in a cave? I mean, these are the kind of things yep. that you're, you're like, who even thinks of this kind of evil? Who would take guys on a beach and, and force them to kneel down and, and, and to just, you know, behead them? Who does that? Well, they don't know what they're doing, and we've got to show them a better way. We've got to show them the love of Christ, and, and the way that begins is through relationship, through forgiveness, yeah. through love. Well, we know that there is evil, there is a devil, and that he's behind driving so much of this stuff, and only spiritual power. Amen. It's not going to be, I mean, we, we want them protected. I, I'm, you know, if we can protect them, or if the government's gonna do it, great, mm -hmm. but that's not what your job is. Yeah. Your job, you were mentioning earlier, was to get out there and, and help them and then help us. But one of the things you mentioned earlier was that I, it really struck a chord was that if every Christian family mm -hmm. would look around and say, I want to bring God's love to a yeah. Muslim family and yeah. just reach out and have them in your home and, and in, embrace them in conversation, get to know them. Absolutely. You know, then we could, because we're, we're lumping everybody into right. one group, aren't yeah. we? And there's a danger to that, isn't there? There is. And that's why the book is titled, uh, it's I Am In, Stories of Christians Facing Islamic Extremists. You know, we're not broad brush, you know, yes. trying to say, you know, every Muslim wants to kill Christians. That's not true not at true. all. Like I said before, many Muslims are nominals. They don't even really know what they believe. You know, right. so what this is forcing them to do is to go back to their foundational scripture, as it were, and to say, what does... What does it say? And then they're, they're, many of them are discovering, this is not who I want to be. I want to be the one. In fact, I heard one, one Muslim said this. He said, um, I want to follow the one who's alive. I want to follow <laughs> the one who's loving and who's you know, here with us today. It, that's, a different, that's a different tactic. You know, it's, a, it's a different approach. So we don't come in condemning. We don't come in with hatred or with fear. We come in with love and we invite them in. Now, in the last moment or so, tell me about your T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Well, the shirt is actually the uh, symbol, the Arabic symbol, Noon, which is what they were spray painting on homes and, and businesses in Mosul. And so this became sort of a symbol of a movement. Well, we say as Christians, I am in. I'm willing to wear the shirt. Now, if I was wearing this shirt right now in the Middle East, it would get a lot of attention. Really? Because this is, a, a, it's really viewed as a derogatory way to view Christians. You know, it's, oh, they're followers of the Nazarene. This is the Noon. This is for Nasara or Nasrani, which is Christian. And so I'm saying, you know, you're going to spray paint this on the houses of my brother and sister. I'm going to, I'm going to stand with them. You might as well spray paint it on my house. You might as well. well I know a guy. I'm not going to go this far, Leon. But I know a guy <laughs> who got a tattoo of this thing, of this symbol. Because, again, he strongly wants to identify. And so that's what we're asking people to do. Will you commit to not letting them suffer in silence and to not let them serve alone? Because we've got practical ways. And people ask, how can I be involved? We've got practical ways. Family med packs, which are health and hygiene packs. We've got action packs. We're providing food, clothing, shelter. You can actually get involved and say, okay, I, it's easy for me to sit here and say, I'm in. How am I going to demonstrate it? One way is by going to imn.com and saying, I will actually uh, support, sponsor, or actually fill. You can take a family med pack. Your family can take it to the store. You can fill it yourself. We will ship it to these brothers and sisters facing Islamic extremists. It's incredible. You write your name on it and say, pray for me. I'm praying for you. That's the kind of ways that we want to serve alongside them. Jason, thank you for being with us today. This has been amazing. Thank you. It's incredible. If you've been watching, I want to encourage you to go to the website on the screen, I am in, and, and see how you can help. Maybe get hold of these t-shirts, identify with them, give, figure out a way to, to be a blessing to the voice of the martyrs, and get a hold of this book, I am in. I think it'll change your life. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this Spirit Contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. 
I'm so glad that we had Dr. Jason Peters on the show today. Sharing the love of God is such an essential part of our Christian lives. One of the best ways to reach people of other cultures and religions is through relationship. The spirit contemporary life is just that. When we use the word spirit contemporary, we mean living our lives in such a way that we just keep growing in favor with God. And we keep growing in favor with the people that we're reaching. The way to do that is to reach out in love. Love always connects. Love always respects. Love always is kind. Love is patient. When we look at all the attributes of love, if we're going to truly be spirit contemporary, then we need to be filled with His presence. But when we deal or talk with anyone, we need to respect them and love them and show that to them, not be condescending in any way. It's so crucial because many people share the gospel of Jesus Christ and they don't get results. We've discovered that when you share the gospel in a spirit contemporary way, that the miraculous explodes onto the scene. We'd love to ask you to join this cause for $30 or more. With that donation, I'd like to send you a gift just to say thank you and let you know that your gift is taking the message of Jesus into... The all the English-speaking world and many other languages around the world. But the gospel is being shared so clearly with such relevance and such effectiveness that lives are being changed by the thousands and we believe by the millions. Thank you so much. Go to your phone right now and be a part of getting people to heaven and advancing the kingdom of God on this planet. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Leon is joined by Nancy Alcorn as she shares how to ditch your emotional baggage and move forward into freedom. I said, don't ever use the language, you know, I, I, I'm a recovering addict. No. You, no. you decree over yourself, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus.